the war is really at home. And we heard this slogan, bring the war home. And that's what we're going to do. we got to bring the war home. we got to get them fucking comedy rats. They're all over. You can't tell where they are. Up and down, sideways, inside out. we got to watch where we are. we got to watch them. Before they kill us. Can't take no chances. I mean, even them kids are liable to grow up and be commies, right? If it's got to be a bloodbath, let it be a bloodbath. What I say is, kill for peace. That's the slogan. Just kill for peace. The more students we get rid of, the more peaceful everything will be. ever imagined traveling beyond the stars. Maybe there is a starfighter left. I love you, Alex Rogan. Comes the unforgettable story of one who made it. <laughs> the Last Starfighter.
Five, four, three, two, one. Mark. Hi, I'm Commander Chris Hadfield, astronaut, spaceship commander, spacewalker, part-time musician. I'm here today to hopefully debunk some common space myths. Here's this common perception that you will immediately fry to a crisp by the unfiltered, unadulterated solar radiation if you get sucked out of the airlock. In truth, it's way worse than that. In the shade in space, it's like minus 250 degrees. But the part of you that's in the sun, it's plus 250 degrees at least. So it's going to start boiling and burning. So it's like lying on a red hot stove with a piece of dry ice on your back. And your lungs are going to be sucked flat instantaneously. But even worse than that is your blood is going to boil, like opening a can of pop where suddenly the, all the little bubbles come out because there's no air pressure around you. So simultaneously, you are going to freeze, boil, burn, get the bends, and no longer be able to breathe. Not a good way to go.
Folks, it's a pleasure to have on our program tonight, Sam Phillips. Sam, come on out and uh, we'll do something. Here. Hi, Sam. How are you? Hello there, Mr. Davis. Nice to see you. Come on over. Glad to have you here. Come on over there, Sam. Right around there and have a seat, if you will, sir. Nice of you to be with us tonight. How you doing? This is a beautiful set, David. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it's all ours. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah. I can see Grant is doing you right. <laughs> no doubt about it, no matter what you say about him. Yeah. So, how are things? Everything all right? You know, everything is uh, fine. I've been back there with Robert uh, Morton. Robert Morton, right? And he's been trying to write a book on me in 30 minutes. Uh -huh. Impossible, I'm guessing. You couldn't do that. Well, uh, Robert could write a book on anybody. He can talk yeah. real good. Yeah. Why don't you have him as a guest on your show? Tonight? Well, we should do that. Maybe, you know, from time to time we have staff members on and we talk you to them do? about... You yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. But we want to talk about you tonight, Sam. I see. <laughs> Is that all right? David, we were trying to talk about me just here for a little while. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Well, you're, you're lucky to Are be. You don't have your teeth fixed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Gee, maybe I ought to have that done well, tonight. How, how did you use yeah. buck teeth and make a million dollars? Now you know there's not a lot of people can do that. No, I know, I know. I've been, I've, I've been very lucky. <laughs> think about, my God. Honestly, think you're about. You're lucky what? you're inside tonight, Sam. Is it that bad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it does look like it yeah. is. So. Now, Sam. Yes. Um, now tell me about the uh, the early days there at uh, at uh, Sun uh, Records. Now who who what kind of a sound were you trying to uh, establish there? <laughs> Let's see. Let me think of that. Well, now that was before Paul Schaefer's era. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What kind of sound? Well, was there a specific, or would you just record anybody who came through? Well, certainly, David. Uh huh. Ah. Uh, you got to work for this a little while tonight, son. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe I've yeah. uh, You know, I don't give away all of my secrets because when this show goes under, you might want to start recording. You know, you still a young man. <laughs> if I give away all of my secrets, what am I going to have to write about in a book and a movie? Right, you sure. know, you That's could sure. copy me, and you're so right. young, I might drop off dead. And Well, then let's just talk about anything you, you want to talk oh, yeah, about, which I have a feeling it, we're going to do anyway. So I'm broke anyway, and I'm old and retired, and... Hey, Sam, look at this. We got some photos. Uh-oh. Uh, take a look at some of these pictures here, Sam. You just tell, them, uh, tell us your first impression when you see the photos, and uh, we'll talk about those for a little bit. Here we have a picture uh, of that's uh, Elvis good, Presley. Good. And is that you there in the that checkered is me. jacket? Yeah. What year uh, was that, do you suppose? Well, I'm Miss McCall, and, I, you know, Gregory Peck hadn't got a damn thing on me in that photo, has he? No. He didn't have then, did he? No, and he still just, doesn't. And... Well, thank you, David. Okay, now let's see who we have here. Who's who's next in the the big gala photo book of? Oh uh, yeah. That's that's you and. Uh, Jera Lee, Jerry Lee the Lewis. killer. Yeah. Now this the this killer. guy was one of the most talented musicians uh, ever to uh, put anything on record, wasn't he? No question about yeah. that. I think Mr. Paul would tell us all that. Uh, Paul, you want to come over and get in on this? <laughs> Mr. Paul. Okay, now, uh, we have other photos here. Paul, uh, tell us what you know about these uh, well, pictures here. Well, this would be Jerry Lee Lewis here. That's Jerry Lee. Be probably yeah. Carl Perkins here. Uh -huh. This would be who would that be? Johnny Cash over uh -huh. there. J.C. J.C. over there, Elvis on piano. Yeah, and and what, were, what were you recording there? Was that an actual recording session? Well, Carl Perkins was doing a session. And it just so happened, I was telling Paul backstage a while ago, that all of a sudden there at 706 Union, our great big studio is almost as pretty as this studio. Good God, this is worth looking for. But uh, they all dropped by, and it just so happened that they all dropped by. Uh -huh. and, uh, they all dropped by, and so we got, the, we got together. We all got... Well, yeah, that's it. Well, you're certainly, uh, you're certainly uh, a well, legend. Guess, you're certainly a legend. You're responsible for uh, the very formation of rock and roll. Don't you think that you had a hand in, in helping 
the, the sound of rock and roll evolved from bits and pieces of other influences. <laughs> David, you're getting awful serious for this show. What, what, what are you setting me up for? I'm, I'm just trying to think oh, of a I real said. nice way to say goodbye, Sam. <laughs> Right there, right there, get it, get it. I'm telling you, man, I'm gonna get that cow. I'm gonna get that goddamn cow. Shit. Man. It is steak night, goddammit. Love me like that. 
You probably heard that space has a smell, maybe like burnt steak or some type of barbecue. That's true. 
When you come in from a spacewalk, you're surrounded by the emptiness of space. It's sort of like the opposite of air. There's nothing there at all. When you quickly repressurize the hatch and you open up the hatch and you smell, what is that lingering smell from a place that used to be exposed to space? The smell in there is, is a little bit like that trace of a smell of gunpowder or burnt steak, or to me, it's sort of like brimstone, like a witch has just been there. It's a cool lingering trace of a smell. I think what it really is, is the emptiness of space, the vacuum of space, is actually pulling trace chemicals out of the metal of the walls of the ship. Little bits of stuff you never smell because normally there's air pressure holding them into the metal. They're slowly off-gassing those tiny little trace gases and trace particles that otherwise they never get into your nose. And those are released. It's sort of that metallic gunpowder fired smell. That's where the smell is coming from. Maybe it's not even coming from space. It's just sort of coming from space's effect on our ship. Yeah, in truth, Smells a little bit like a burnt steak. Hi, I'm Croy, spaceflight records recording artist and lead singer of the band Croy and the Boys. Here to talk to you about a brand new Sunday morning tradition. The churches aren't closed, but they should be forever. So instead, join me from the comfort of your own home, 11 a.m. every Sunday morning as long as the world lets me get away with it, for a new thing called Coffee with Croy. See you on Sunday. The question is often asked, when will UFO disclosure happen? These lights, they keep coming together? The answer is, it has. The New York Times revealed the existence of a secret government program to investigate UFO sites. This is a very complicated story. I have put a briefing together for every president since Bill Clinton. Interplanetary war. What? Oh, this is the next big thing that they want the public to be afraid of. This is a national security imperative. We must have American dominance in space. But it's all a lie. The national security state, they want to establish a planetary government by spinning that this is a threat. One set of facts, two narratives. The threat isn't extraterrestrial. The threat is covert human. The close encounters of the fifth kind protocols developed by Dr. Greer is the most dangerous information he has released to the public. Human initiated communication with extraterrestrials is possible. Oh. All of us are gonna know the truth. This is our moment. We have the ability to change life for the better. Consciousness isn't limited by space and time. What I'm doing with CE5 is the foundation for the relationship between humans and these extraterrestrials. But the implications are absolutely profound. That shows consciousness does affect reality. A critical mass of people can shift an entire civilization. But the intelligence community don't want the public to know. They say, what's in it for me? It's easy. A new world, if you can take it. Oh my god. Some kind of delusion Buying into all the 
fear and all the blame We're all suffering through unprofound conclusion And time and memory will always make it strange Ordered 
Painted windows, graffiti art, an old Nova car under the stars, and dancing in the wind. 1977 again. Dancing in the wind, nineteen seventy seven again. Hello, hello, uh, Mr. Hager. Yes, this is Joe Hager. Uh, Joe, are, uh, is your father the one that uh, makes uh, clothes? Yes, sir. We're all together. You all made me some real lightweight. Slacks uh, uh, that he just made up on his own, sent to me three or four months ago. It's a kind of a light brown and a light green, rather soft green and soft brown. Yes, now I need about six pairs for summer wear. Yes, I need about six pairs uh, to wear around in the evening when I come in from work. Yes, and I can send you a pair. I want them a half an inch larger in the waist than they were before. Except I want two or three inches of stuff left back in there so I can take them up. I vary 10 to 15 pounds a month. So uh, leave me at least two and a half, three inches in the back where I can let them out or take them up. And put it, make these a half inch bigger in the waist. Make the pockets at least an inch longer. Money, uh, My money and my knife and everything fall out. Wait just a minute. Hello. Hello. Now, another thing with crotch down where your nuts hang is always a little too tight. So when you make them up, give me an inch that I can let out there uh, because they cut me. They're just like riding a, a wire fence. These are almost these are the best that I've had anywhere in the United States. But uh, uh, when I gain a little weight, they cut me under there. So leave me. Uh, you never do have much margin there. Let's see if you can't leave me about an inch from the, where the zipper in, uh, ends, uh, round uh, under my, back to my bunghole. All right, then. So I can let it out there if I need to. Okay. Now, be sure you got the best zippers in them. These are good that I have. And uh, if you get those to me, I would sure be grateful. Uh, where would you like to be, please? White House. I just sure will appreciate this. I need it more than anything. And uh, uh, now, you give this boy the address because I'm running for a funeral, and give him address just how to dress these trousers. So we'll send them to you. And don't you, you get the measurements out of them and add a half an inch to the back. Give us an inch to the pockets, and about an uh, inch underneath uh, so we can let them out. Now, would you like just a little more stride in the crotch? Yeah, that's right. Yes, sir. Okay, here he is. I'm glad you enjoyed the others. Okay, go ahead, please.